Well, there's new research to suggest any level of caffeine could cause a negative pregnancy outcomes for would-be mothers. We go to our resident health expert, Dr Tamara Hunter. Tamara, good afternoon. Pregnant women have previously been advised that consuming a small amount of caffeine daily would not harm their baby, but it looks like that may not be the case. Yeah, that, that's true, Jerry. This, um, well, we know, for example, that uh, caffeine is the most widely consumed psychoactive drug on the planet. Um, up to 90% of women who are pregnant consume caffeine in tea, in coffee, in caffeinated soft drinks and so on. So we know that it's widely consumed. Now in the early 80s there was actually sm some small research that showed an increased risk of birth defects in animal models. So we've always suggested that maybe just one to two moderate strength coffees a day would be okay. But this research that was published this month in the British Medical Journal and actually looked at over 12 1,200 studies, recent studies, uh, gives us very persuasive confirmation that perhaps caffeine is associated with uh, an increase in negative pregnancy outcomes. And in fact, the, the research suggested that the more caffeine consumed, the higher risk of these negative outcomes. And in fact, they didn't actually, or they weren't actually able to show a lower limit where there was safety. So does it mean coffee, tea, both out? And, and what are the negative outcomes? Yes, so caffeine is what we're talking about. And so caffeine is it's present in coffee, it's present in caffeinated teas, it's also present in some soft drinks that people consume. The, there were five main areas that they found an increase in negative outcomes. Uh, the first was miscarriage with an associated dose response, so the higher the caffeine, the higher the risk of miscarriage. They also showed an increase in stillbirth rates. Four out of five studies showed an increased rate of stillbirth. They showed an increased rate of small for gestational age babies or growth restricted babies. 11 out of 13 studies showed this as well. There was actually also an increased rate of uh, childhood acute leukaemia and childhood obesity. Now, some people have opposed this particular review, stating that these are only associations and not causal, but there were equally some studies in the review that showed this dose response. So this study does need to be taken seriously. Wow, yeah, it sounds like some pretty uh, compelling results there. So with pregnancy there does often come extreme exhaustion though so you can understand why mums might reach for a <laughs> cup of coffee. Well, do you have any advice for people who are struggling, pregnant women who are struggling? Yeah well, well pregnancy is a time of incredible change. Heart rate goes up, respiratory rate, uh, metabolic processes increase so there's a lot of physiology changing and tiredness and exhaustion is definitely a part of that. So it's important to look after yourself. Sleep is absolutely key. Making sure there's a diet rich in fruits and vegetables all those important vitamins and minerals. Doing some exercise, particularly low impact exercise. If you've never exercised before, definitely speak to your doctor. Making sure that you're not iron deficient. That's a common cause of tiredness. So getting that checked in pregnancy, supplementing if required. Mental health is also really important. It's not just about postnatal depression. Sometimes depression and anxiety can start before you actually have the baby. So checking in with your doctor is really, really important. And there may be conditions like hypothyroidism, thyroidism and even diabetes that can manifest in pregnancy. So check in with your doctor, ask about your symptoms and uh, get some support and help. Good advice. Thank you, Dr. Tamara. We'll see you next time. See you, Jerry.